everyone to be quiet. That would be hopeless. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome. Welcome to the GOBT Historical Society Museum, and welcome to the opening of the Two Spirit Voices returning to the circle. We're so proud to be able to host this exhibit and all of you tonight. Um, it's, it, for me personally, it really exemplifies the critical work that we do in uh, this museum and with our archives. And my only job tonight is to introduce one of my board members, and she's one of my bosses. She's on the committee that's my boss, so I have to do really well. So I'm going to read her biography, uh, also known as Mika Thomas. Landa Lakes uh, was honored to be elected Grand Duchess 36 of San Francisco in 2008. So we're among royalty. And since that time, has served on the board as President of the Board, VP of Membership Affairs, Chancellor of Protocol, and Ball Chair. Landa began her life in the activist community in the Bay and Les Gay and Lesbian Alliance. <coughs> I didn't bring my reading glasses. ACT UP Oklahoma. I didn't know we were ACT UP compatriots. Okay. And the American Indian Student Association at the University of Oklahoma. She was chairperson for the Bay Area American Indian Two Spirits for six years and also served on the board of the Native American AIDS Project, Chickasaw Hika Council, and the Human Rights Commission of San Francisco, and most recently has become a member of our board of directors. So I love you all, and with that, I'll introduce Landa Lakes. Thank you, Mr. Hill. Hi. Good to see everybody here. You know, um, one of the first things that I, that I saw when I walked in was I thought to myself, you know, um, Sally Ramon, who is a former board um, board member for Bates, would be so happy to come in and see how petitely she is represented here tonight. <laughs> she would, she would, she she would live for that, and that that makes me really, really happy. And of course, um, it's it's great as Native people to be included in that history because we were the first peoples here. Um, throughout the Americas, and um, we also want to represent our community in always good ways. So in order to really represent our community in a good way, I want to turn it over to Roger so that um, he can go ahead and tell us a little bit about the history of AIDS. And wait, 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 I just want to say one thing. You know, this, this picture of me over here that, that is signed, I signed that as a joke. <laughs> I, I signed that as a joke to Ruth, and I was... She was like, I want your autograph as a cover girl, and I was like, whatever. <laughs> I did not know until I came tonight, and I saw it posted up there, and I'm like, oh my god, how embarrassing. Uh, I'm actually going to be sharing an honor song, um, and then some other of my uh, board members are going to uh, tell you a little bit more about the history of Bates. The song that I'm going to share with you all uh, was written by a friend of mine named Rosary Spence, who is Cree from Toronto, um, she calls the song Kokowam, which is a Cree word for a grandmother. And so tonight I um, honor my friend Rosary. I also honor uh, my grandmother with this song. I honor all murdered and missing indigenous women. I honor all two-spirit people with this song. Yeah. 
know, putting all of this together is such a reflection uh, just from our community, how far we've come, and um, just really grateful to be here. Um, I just wanted to mention, um, in case people don't know, my name is Ruth Villasenor, and, and I'm Chiricahua Apache and Mexican, and I've been a member of, or been involved with Bates for at least 19, 20 years. And I wasn't one of the founders. We do have two of the founders here tonight. I definitely want to acknowledge them. Gina Hightower. Oh. And then Morning Star. She's somewhere in the back. Morning Star. <laughs> and tomorrow, um, we definitely, if you, if you join us tomorrow at our um, social, our pre powwow social, we'll be. Um, having a moment where we're going to really acknowledge the founders and have an opportunity to hear from them. And um, thank you again. And if Derek wants to say a few words. Um, I'm Derek. I'm a board member of Bates as well. Um, really honored that, um, to have you all here today. Um, appreciative, as the gentleman said earlier, uh, that we're on Olumi land and, uh, and what a gift it is to, to be in this beautiful land, right? That we're, many of us, even in the Native community, are in a land that is not the one that our, our grandparents lived in. Um, and, and that's why we find ourselves coming together in, in great orgs like Bates. I know for myself, about 12 years ago, it was a great place to stumble into. Um, and I think it's been the same story for a lot of beautiful people from our community who've really found home, family connection um, from Bates as an organization. Um, without further ado, I think we're going to we're going to do a little honoring here, and um, I will put continued shout outs for the powwow. If you're not already planning on coming, we're expecting about 6,000 people, and we'd love to see you on Saturday. Ooh, with Rainbow Pro. This is also Sean the official two-spirit blanket from 8th Generation. It's a, a native-owned blanket maker. It's officially a two-spirit design. I just want to say a few words at Roger, um, Porch Creek? Porch. Yeah, Porch Creek. Um, actually has been involved with the Two-Spirit community in New York and here, um, probably a total of 18 years or so. So he has been involved with the Two-Spirit community on each coast. <laughs> and when he moved here, probably seven, eight years ago, he immediately got involved with us. He dared to get involved with us! <laughs> and he immediately started to offer help, which we took advantage of. And he just has taken on that leadership role so many times, over and over and over again. He's a published author. He is, he's a, um, a, a therapist. He is just an amazing husband, <laughs> and he's just an amazing person who has just really shown over and over again, to us Two-Spirit means you do serve your community, you open yourself up, and sometimes it's hard because, you know, many of us, it's not a large group, even though we have a lot of members, we just have a small amount who really work hard to make sure that we have visibility in our community. And we are just so honored that you have um, been willing to be our chairperson <laughs> for um, quite a few years now. And sometimes it's hard for us to let go, but we do thank you that um, you've given us so many amazing, you know, just, I don't know, just chances to like be involved in this type of thing and just the visibility you've helped us bring. Mm -hmm. And I wish I had a totally written out speech, but you know what comes from my heart. You know what comes from all of our, our group's heart and how much we do love you and thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Amelia Vigil is our new chair, and we're really, really honored Ooh. to have her at the spot. Let's give her a round of applause, please. Um, this is a, a real passing of the guard, and Amelia, similar to the story of Roger, maybe a couple years later, really rolled in um, with, with sleeves rolled up and said, how can I help put me to work? Um, Amelia um, walks in such a good way um, with such a song in her heart. I, I think at every moment in every interaction, people think, um, it's it's um, hard to not be inspired, I think, by the energy and the positivity. Um, 
Amelia has been uh, a wonderful friend to me and, and I think to the whole board um, in, in this transition period. And um, we're really just honored at, at the way that she's gonna bring Bates to a next level as well, just as Roger did, just as others did. We have six board members right now and only one of them wasn't the chair before. <laughs> so it's kind of a passing of the baton, Miko, before Ruth came back had to relieve me to, you know, and then Roger and now we're back to Amelia. So um, if you'd like to join our board, we're, we're looking for a new chair in a couple years probably. So, um, but, but just to say Amelia is, has been such a pleasure to work with and we're really looking forward to big things. Um, not No pressure, um, but we, we know what <laughs> Amelia can bring and, and she knows what comes before her. Um, I'm really honored because, um, you know, I was also touched as I moved in because a, a dear friend of ours, Sally Ramon, <laughs> was just a pleasure and also um, had a lot of body jokes and things too, um, was really a, a wonderful human being. This is her regalia and she's a, a fantastic um, transgender Tona Odom um, community member one of the founding folks of Bates. Um, we're honored to have today, um, for, through Roots Delivery, um, a flu. I want to tell the story. Oh, please, please, <laughs> <laughs> jump in. <coughs> so, um, when Sally um, had to get, or I, I guess put her, had to go uh, into a, a skilled care facility, um, both Derek and I helped um, move a lot of her things and held on to a lot of her things and um, in truthfulness she wanted to stay here even though her family wanted her to go back because as a transgendered woman um, they still struggled with they still struggled with whether she would be called Sally or whether she would be called Ramon and she decided that this was her family and she would stay here really she wanted to because she felt like you know we were we were there we came and spent time with her we visited her on a regular basis and so we held on to a lot of her things and she actually um, I, I never saw her play a flute but this was her flute <laughs> maybe you all did I don't know maybe somebody Randy so I kept this on my altar for probably, I don't even know how long now. It's been over five years since she passed. Oh, okay. So it was very interesting. Last board meeting we had, Amelia said, would you mind if I sing, if I play my flute? And I didn't even know Amelia played the flute. So I was just thinking as this flute sat on the altar that, okay, this is who it was supposed to be passed on to. Oh. So I never knew all this time, but I've been holding on to it to make sure that the next generation has something from one of our founders and that you will have her in your heart with some of the founders too that helped form this group and they will, she'll help you and give you strength, okay? we get lost in words they really don't speak the depth of emotion so um, I'm just gonna take a minute to be emotional I invite you all to do the same so I wanted to just share a little bit more about Bates Bay Area American Indian Two-Spirit yeah we're an all-volunteer organization that means each and every one of us is here um, with our additional jobs and lives and we're doing this for our community and for our visibility and for the medicine that we find in each other and our connections and in our culture. This organization has, it, we're in our 20th year. It's the 20 year anniversary and that's a big deal. Yeah. That does mean that you know, those, those who came before me, those who came before those who came before me, those who came before those who came before me, who came before that person, who came before that person, we're all lined up together here doing this work and sharing, sharing it with all of you. And because you're here, you now share it with us. Um, there, we are in some interesting times right now. That's where words don't serve us either. 
We all, we all can assume what that means. But to frame it and to name it, we can think about, I want to pull in just how very recently there are still hate crimes going, along, going around our nation. So I want to just you know, recognize that in this celebration, every side has a balance. And there's pain here. And to not shy away from that, but to embrace it and transform it into the love that we're having in this emotional transition. Um, now all of you know that this is that we are on Ohlone territory. Mm -hmm. I invite each of you to remember that and recognize it, and find the land that you're on when you're on and as you travel. You have no excuses anymore because you came into this room. <laughs> <laughs> so Bates, we do some really, um, we've done some great things over the years. I say we as if I was there. <laughs> um, but I have been involved in the organization for not that long seven years or so, um, and in these cases actually represent um, our beginnings. The Pride Parade? No words. Then we've got our powwow and some medicine here. Other offerings we have is uh, the Two-Spirit Drum. And we do regalia making um, and some dance classes. And because we are an all volunteer organization, uh, that means that we are currently homeless. Yeah. We do not have an office. In fact, we work out of our homes, out of our garages, out of our um, out of our puzzle rooms, out of what we can. And and we're still um, we're still very much here. This um, ribbon shirt is an example of some of that of a. a of one of the offerings that we have for people to come together. It was gifted to me. Um, and so I, I want to recognize that in a, um, in a tribal urban setting, there's so many different ways and practices and you know, it gets complex, it gets dynamic, it gets hard, it gets judgmental. But we are still here. We're working together and we're showing that, that um, across culture, in a context where it can suck your soul, and I mean that literally at times, um, we find a way to blossom love, friendship, and community. Just one little thing, I promise. Um, I wanted to say that, yes, this show has been very emotional for us, and um, that we, I have a friend here that worked at the Native American AIDS Project, and I would really like you all to take some time to look at this, because many of us were impacted by <coughs> HIV, and we really had a lot of stigma in our community around that. We really worked hard, even within our own community, and I'm thankful Andrew's here, who wrote this book. That's awesome. And Anthony Kavanis is here, who works with Kat, and I am just, I was really lucky to work with the Native American Health Center at the time and collaborate with Nat many times, but that was part of, I felt like, the way that we did take care of our community. And that's how we still, regardless of whatever issues are happening, whether it be mental health, network, whatever issues, that that's what we connect and embrace. We want to make sure that we um, are those role models for the next generation, and that they can see us and say, we embrace you. So I just wanted to mention that. And I'm grateful that we do have younger generation continuing this home. <laughs> I'll, I'll say the final closing thing. One of the things I want to do is I, I really want to thank the Historical Society for having us here, for being able to arrive to do this. I think that's really awesome. I also want to say one thing is like, you can see from our very beginnings how, how it started and it was, um, you know, a lot of like photocopying and stuff. Then all of a sudden it got really polished over here with the powwow and everything else because it, everything really takes time and everything else, but you also never know the impact that you're going to have, um, not just on this local community, but nationally. Um, one of the things I'll say is that 
you know, there are now other Two-Spirit powwows. Yes. When we started, it was yeah. just us. But there are other Two-Spirit powwows now. Um, Haskell Indian University is going on for its second annual Two-Spirit powwow. Woo! Edmonton is honey theirs. Phoenix is um, getting underway right now to start their Two-Spirit powwow. So this small impact just keeps growing. And the Gathering of Nations last year had its very first yes. Two-Spirit uh, um, honor guard walk in into the largest powwow in the world. That's the largest powwow in the world. And they're planning on doing it again this year. So sometimes the little impacts that you have starting here with like just, just the basics, just to get things underway, just so that we could have like this, this international gathering. And then it just grew into like this organization that has reached across the United States and Canada and even Mexico. We have people from coming from all over to our powwow and we're ever so grateful. And we have always been a small organization. We're a grassroots organization. You know, when when we go out, you know, we don't have like a lot of big corporate sponsorships or anything like that. So everybody who comes, you should really appreciate that because we really don't have anything that we're pushing. We're not pushing you to smoke tobacco. We're not pushing you to buy wine. We're not pushing you to gamble. We're pushing you to come out and join our community. And that's one of the most important things that I think that Bates really started is that you belong somewhere and we all belong. <laughs>